Um, uh, I had about six weeks prep, but we didn't have okay. all the scripts at the beginning. Yeah. But we knew the story arc and the way the story is set, our sets, our characters' homes, um, police station, our lab. We were locked, pretty much locked into those locations. So even if I didn't know exactly what was going to happen, I would know that I needed, you know, all the stuff for the police station or clipboards and, and hazmat suits and things for the for the lab. So I could start to get all those together. And then as the scripts come in and they're in individual pieces that we need, then I can start to panic about those them. things. <laughs> I need, like I said before, I need multiples of things. Sure. So I couldn't go and buy old bikes that might not work or might break. So we bought all new bikes and then doctored them all up. They were, they've all been individually painted and we bought handle things that were period and the lamps that were period and we put all those together and then did things like this with the tape and the aging so that we created the look of period bikes using new bikes that I could do multiples of. Yeah. Um, we spent a lot of time going to estate sales, which is um, when a person passes away and they don't have family okay. to manage their belongings. It's really sad actually, but yeah. you you go into their house and everything is just for sale. In a lot of cases, you're like just walking into a time capsule. So we spent a lot of time walking into just homes that hadn't changed since the 60s and 70s and 80s, and just we literally bought, we just bought everything. You know? and, and from there, we have this big, incredible stock of very real, very lived-in sort of period pieces. That's you know why this set feels so real because. The reality is that all this stuff really did earn its age by being lived in. This exterior matches our uh, practical location, our exterior location, which is out uh, south in the, in the boonies. Um, so yeah, we, we basically, to create this, we had a photographer who does this specifically, stand on the front porch of the location and take you know, a 180 photo. So this is actually what you would see out the windows of the house that we use for the exterior. This is uh, sort of at the center of what went wrong. This is where our character 11, our test subject, is uh, she's put in this tank that amplifies her psychic abilities and um, it's, it's something that goes on while she's uh, in, in this sort of psychic space that causes, she kind of comes in contact with this other dimensional creature which causes this uh, rift between uh, which between our world and, and this other alternate dimension, which is ultimately what uh, unleashes the creature and 
and everything else that goes awry. The first layer we do with all of this practical effects and then once that's all, uh, we shoot it this way and then CGI goes in and they add a layer of, they add a bit of dimension and they add, I think, uh, some motion as well to some of the tentacles. Although we do have, in a lot of places, there are bladders built in, so we have physical, uh, physical motion and all of this stuff. But, uh, but yeah, um, there will be a good bit of, of CGI, particularly right here, this is, this rift goes into another dimension, so there's this sort of undulating uh, organic membrane that our, some of our characters pass through, um, which, which leads into the netherworld. It's always a, a really challenging thing though to wear a creature suit, so our, our performer is a, an expert at it. He's, he's well conditioned to undergo the rigors and you know, the stress of wearing a suit like this for hours and hours on end, uh, and then performing unable to see sometimes, and you know, unable to really feel anything. All of his tactile faculties are, are lost really. The hands on the suit are motivated by the actor. Uh, Mark Steger's arms come out through these openings here, and he's wearing either black or green uh, chroma key sleeves, and he operates the movement, the gross movements of the arms like this, while Claire and I 